Morning there, bud. How many of you uh, know the Overland Limited set, eh? I'm sure most of you have there, bud. We are not here to talk about that set. We're here to talk about this set. So, I bought an older set, a flagship of sorts for Bachman, the Overland Limited. I had low expectations for this set, as it's from Bachman, and I have already edited half the video before I actually ran the set. Man, this thing is terrible. Let's start with the cars. I had low expectations for them. It's a train set, didn't expect much. And I own a few other Bachman cars, and they're all okay. I still prefer Athern, but the Bachman ones, well, they have metal wheels, decent printing, and good plastic. These cars, oh boy. Cheap, plastic, fantastic. I know you can't feel cars through a camera, but imagine holding the cheapest of 80s cars. Like, we're talking like... Tyco and like some of the early Mantua ones that weren't great or even some of their later stuff. And now imagine a car that is literally worse than that. Oh! Ew! I really, really hope that the newer sets don't have cars this cheap. I know a lot of you guys told me Bachman's older sets discouraged a lot of people from the hobby. And I will admit, uh, this would discourage me. And before this set, believe me, I avoided Bachman products. I had two, three, maybe four of them at once, or at one point when I was a kid. But after I bought my first Athern car, wanted nothing to do with Bachman. I didn't even buy a Bachman car until 2022. And that was a track cleaning car at that. And it kind of changed my mind. I also bought had plenty of Spectrum 2.10.2s and 2.8.0s, and they've all been great. I don't really have much to complain about them other than their decoders sucking and blowing up. And I bought a full set of Great Northern Heavyweights, the old Spectrum ones, and have been reasonably satisfied with them. I really thought Bachman had changed. I thought this set would be decent, and maybe the gold in this set wouldn't be the cars or the track or anything like that, but the locomotive, and... Well, let's take a look at this mixed bag. The engine was the whole reason I bought this set. I wanted a Canadian National U2G Northern since I saw one in Trains 2006, and this seemed like an economical way to have one. Man, I was wrong. Detail-wise, it's actually pretty good, no complaints. The air pumps on the front are just a little bit on the wonky side, but not horrible, and the printing and lining on the model are actually quite good. And the engine itself runs well enough, no complaints there. And that would be enough to still give this set a passing approval, in my opinion. Kind of like the engine would be the gold in the set, and that would be the whole reason you would get it, because you couldn't buy this engine separately. And still, Bachman somehow managed to screw this up. Just, 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 just watch these clips, you'll know what I'm talking about in a second. Tight. Did you notice it? 
Bachman made the draw bar too low for this tender. Like did any research and development go into this? It would have been easily solved with a longer pin or a raised draw bar. I, I, I just, I just can't. Like, I wanted to give Bachman a huge W here. I wanted to make Bachman look good. But my model is not unique. Of the people I've talked to and who voted in my poll, of everyone that at least owns one, has the same problem. I was willing to overlook the Dodge Track standards. Cars that feel very cheap with plastic wheels and low tolerance standards that derail constantly if the stupid engine ran flawlessly. But no, Bachman couldn't even be bothered to do that because it's, 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 it's all fucking awful. It's all of it, all of it, and every single one of them sucks. 